Hello, everyone, and welcome to Think Tech Hawaii's program, which is called How Did We Get Here? And I am the program's host. My name is DeSoto Brown. I am the Bishop Museum historian here in Honolulu at Bishop Museum, and I'm also the curator for the archives department. And I'm going to be showing you yet another story of something that you may not know about from Hawaii's past. And we're going to be looking today at the subject of shopping centers. And before we go any further, I want to let you know that the images that you're going to be seeing here, some are from my personal collection and some are from Bishop Museum. And what is shopping centers? What is a shopping center? Well, a shopping center is a structure or a complex of structures which puts together a number of different retail stores usually, but it does include other things as well. Shopping centers uh, are a concept that goes back, it's very difficult to say exactly when the first shopping center was created and where, when, how, et cetera. And I'm not gonna try to get into the origin of the concept of shopping centers. Instead, I'm just gonna be talking about some selected few here on the island of Oahu in history to show you how they've changed, to show you how the concept grew and so forth. And this is something you probably haven't thought about a lot because shopping centers are a part of our existence, but we don't really give them a lot of thought. So as we go through time, first, we're gonna look at some individual shopping centers on Oahu to talk about what they are, where they were and how they've done. So to begin with, here is the Haula Shopping Center in the small community of Haula on Windward, Oahu. The Haula Shopping Center appears to have opened in 1965, and it fulfills the requirement of what a shopping center is because it has what's called an anchor store, which in this case is the IGA supermarket that's at the far left of the picture. It has other stores that uh, cover t other types of retailing. So in other words, a shopping center, if it is well planned, will not include multiples of the same type of store. You will always want to have a variety of stores so that you don't have your tenants competing against each other too much. And a shopping center also has to have parking. And that is one of the most important aspects of what a shopping center is, which we will be seeing as we go along. This shopping center, uh, as I said, probably opened in 65. This is a picture of it from the early 1970s. And as you can see, it is not hugely crowded because of course, as I said, the community was located in was not that big, but we're gonna be seeing some much bigger shopping centers as we go through this story. So here's another one. This is the Moana Lua Shopping Center. And I'm gonna be looking at my notes to tell you what some of the dates are for some of these original or uh, the ones that I'm showing you are here at the beginning. And the Moana Shopping Center opened in August of 1954. Now this was at a time when the, when shopping centers were very actively being constructed. There had been shopping centers already before World War II here in Honolulu, but I'm not gonna get into all those specifics. Starting in the 50s, they really began to increase in number. This was the new coming thing in retailing in that modern time period. And everybody was happy that, that we were being so modern. Uh, the Moana Lua Shopping Center uh, got to its full tenancy in 1956 and it had 32 different tenants in it. And as I said, the anchor store here, this is what we're looking at right now, is this Foodland supermarket. Foodland was and is a local chain of supermarkets that was very much its growth was very much tied to the growth of shopping centers. Moana Loa Shopping Center had a problem in that it was not located directly on a large street. So if you were driving by, you did not see it readily and want to go to it. So it always had a problem with not getting as many people as it might have gotten. In the time period since this picture was taken in the early 1960s, this entire complex has been demolished and has it has been completely rebuilt. There still is a shopping center there, but none of the 50s buildings are still there anymore. And the tenancy has gone up. And of course, the number of people have gone up because the area around it has become much more populated with subdivisions. And that's always something that you have to have 
in order for a sh successful shopping center to be there, you've got to have people in the area, usually in enough of a concentration that they will come there and you'll get your customers. Now we go to another shopping center, which unfortunately wasn't ultimately that successful. This is the Kalihi Shopping Center. And again, looking at my notes, it uh, was opened in the 1950s. This is about 1955. It was in an area which was very populated, but was not very actively growing at the time. And this shopping center was not that large. It also had the anchor store of a food line supermarket, which is in the far right of this picture. There was also a large bowling alley and you can see the sign for the bowling alley with a giant bowling pin on the left. Uh, that was partly located at the lower level that's, that you can see there's a driveway going down um, on the far left of this picture as well. The Kalihi Shopping Center was not that large and it had the misfortune, I think, of being in an area which kind of got cut off by the construction of the H1 freeway in the middle 1960s, so about 10 years after this picture was taken. And when that happened, King Street, which the shopping center fronted onto, was kind of made into, in this area, a dead end. So it wasn't someplace where there was a lot of traffic going past. The shopping center lasted for a long time, but it didn't really keep very active. A lot of the tenants just stayed there. And eventually it closed down completely. And today, this is a car dealership. So not every shopping center is automatically going to be a success. And they may point out that shopping centers in the United States right now have gone down in number quite a lot. They reached their peak in the 1980s. And since that time, in a number of places, you can see videos on YouTube of abandoned or closed shopping centers all over the United States. So this is not an unfamiliar story. Here, on the other hand, is a successful shopping center that's still with us. This is the Kailua Shopping Center. And as you can see, it has multiple uh, initials displayed on signs, KSC, Kailua Shopping Center. And then not only are these large letters visible on the left side of this picture, but the building that itself has two pylons or upright uh, built-in sort of signs, if you will, that have the KSC on them as well. This opened in June of 1954 with just 11 businesses. And it was just the smaller part that you see on the left of this picture. It was enlarged in April 1958 to include the Time Supermarket, which is on the right side of this picture. And it also added 100 and uh, it added 100 parking spaces to the existing 150 that it already had. Kailua Town has grown a lot since this picture was taken in about 1958. And primarily that is because the windward side of Oahu in general has grown a lot with the construction and the opening of the Pali Highway and the uh, Like Like Highway, both which pretty much were open 1960-61. Pali Highway took, opened in increments over a period of about five or more years. Once those roads were in, the Kailua and Kaneohe area in particular grew a lot. And this Kailua shopping center was also given enough uh, people to support it. And that's why it is still here today. Now, some people are gonna look at this and think, I don't know where this is. If you look on the right side of this picture, you'll see this freestanding sign that says, Wailai Shopping Center, but that is not a name that many people are gonna know. The Wailai Shopping Center opened November 1954, and it had just five tenants. And that's what this is showing you. Again, there is an anchor store. It is the Piggly Wiggly Supermarket. It may be difficult to see, but that's right in the center of this photograph. And it has a very distinctive roof with these parallel lines on it. We're gonna be seeing more of that. There are only five tenants now. In 1958, the shopping center increased in size a large amount with more built behind it. We're just about to see that. 
And again, I'm going to be explaining where this is because you're not going to recognize it today. Piggly Wiggly, by the way, was a national chain of grocery stores. I believe this was their first full-size supermarket in the Hawaiian Islands. There had been Piggly Wiggly stores here since the late 1920s, but they were all small grocery stores. This, they've taken a step into the modern age of a supermarket. Well, we're going from this view in 1955 to this view of the same place in 1964. And right in the center of the picture is that same supermarket, but now it is a star supermarket, which was a local chain of supermarkets, which is now no longer uh, with us anymore. Uh, it was bought by Time Supermarkets. And that's the same building with that same distinctive roof. In the background behind the supermarket, you can see a larger building that says Liberty House. Liberty House was the premier local department store chain. And in 2001, it was bought out to become Macy's. So that store is still there, but it's now a Macy's store. There's also been a lot more added to the Wai Shopping Center, which you don't see too readily right here, but it's on the right-hand side as well in the background. And this is not a normal view. I have to say, this is a photograph of a special event. So there are a lot more people and a lot more cars in the parking lot than you normally would have seen at the time. So now we're going to go from 1964 to 1969 or 1970. And again, we're in the same place. The supermarket is still right there in the center, but the shopping center's grown a great deal. There's a lot more to it. The on the left-hand side to the left of the supermarket, you'll see there's a bigger building. And on the right, there's a lot more as well. That's because this shopping center has been dramatically enlarged and it's been enclosed. It has become an enclosed shopping mall and it's now called Kahala Mall. You are familiar with Kahala Mall. Well, that you just saw how Kahala Mall came into existence. Kahala Mall was uh, the first enclosed shopping mall in the Hawaiian Islands. And there's an interesting connection to a famous person who was uh, associated with the development of shopping centers and shopping malls. That was an architect named Victor Gruen. He was originally from Austria, moved to the United States. And his company actually was the initial architectural firm that designed this small shopping center, the Wailai Shopping Center, you saw in the first picture. Victor Gruen is much more famous for having constructed, designed and constructed, the first enclosed shopping mall with weather outside and all the, uh, the air conditioning and the heating, et cetera, on the inside for the people. And that was in Minnesota. That's the Southdale Mall. The Southdale Mall is still present today. At the time, it was a tremendous innovation and probably it was the first in the world of its type. Victor Gruen initially was very proud of it, but then he came to dislike shopping centers and particularly shopping malls, which is ironic because he was the pioneer of them. Well, Victor Gruen's uh, company had nothing to do with the Kahala Mall remodel, but he was the person who started, who built or designed, I should say, this initial structure that turned into the Hala Mall. Now, here's a photograph of what the exterior of the Hala Mall originally looked like. It was super bare bones. It was really, really basic. If you look at how this is constructed, these are steel girders that are welded together and bolted together. And then on running uh, from side to side, you see these trusses, these metal trusses with the sort of zigzag metal uh, parts to it, to them. Those are to add obviously strength and stability. And then on top of those, there's just plain corrugated metal. And that's the roof. The, and it's just plain concrete. I have to say that having gone to this wildlife shopping center many great, great many times as a kid, it wasn't very appealing outdoors. It was not very attractive. It was kind of dimly lit. It was kind of a wind tunnel. It wasn't someplace you wanted to hang around. There wasn't any seating. All of the storefronts were also extremely low budget. 
they were just metal frameworks with uh, glass panels with large, usually large pieces of glass. It was not someplace that was really too thrilling to go to. Well, that turned into this. And here's Kahala Mall after it had been redone. Uh, that process took from 1968 into 1969, but it took a while before all of the tenants gradually moved in, um, all of the individual stores were finished out, et cetera. This is what we consider a mall today. We're very familiar with it, but at the time this was a very different thing here. It's carpeted, it's air conditioned, there's indirect lighting, there are places to sit. It's very much more inviting. And Kahala Mall, to its credit, has continued to be successful in the face of many other shopping centers not being successful in a number of other places. Obviously, today, the, the tenants or the stores that you see in this picture are no longer present. Um, it has become more upscale, as is commonly done, uh, as we'll also see later on. But um, it's still successful, and that's to its credit. And now we're going to end with the big daddy of all shopping centers here in the Hawaiian Islands, and that's Ala Moana Center. This is a sign which was posted on the grounds of Ala Moana as it was being constructed in 1958 and 1959 to let you know what was coming. And as you can see, there are going to be 80 merchants and 5,000 parking spaces. This was a very big deal. And in fact, when Ala Moana opened, it was the biggest shopping center in the United States and the world, which is kind of astonishing. Now, what's the backstory? The backstory is that the property that Ala Moana was built on was owned by the Dillingham Corporation. And the Dillingham Corporation has one of its companies, one of its subsidiaries, was Hawaiian Dredging. Hawaiian dredging was responsible for doing a lot of dredging offshore of the city of Honolulu. And as the dredges dug through the coral of the reefs offshore, all of that churned up coral pieces, those pieces, were piped on shore and deposited in areas that were wetlands. This is primarily what happened to Waikiki, but the area where Ala Moana was also marshy, is, is was marshy then and Ala Moana is now. And that's how Dillingham got the property. Well, it, it stayed there empty for many years. In the late 1940s, Dillingham looked into for the first time potentially constructing a shopping center on this big piece of property in the middle of urban Honolulu. They didn't proceed then, but they did finally continue in the 1950s, in the late 50s, having enlarged the idea considerably to be a multi-level parking uh, structure as well as two levels of retail. Why was Ala Moana built? Well, here's the main reason in this photograph taken in 1955 or 1956 of Fort Street in downtown Honolulu and King Street is at the very bottom of this picture and we are looking Mauka. Fort Street and downtown Honolulu were the main shopping places for most residents of the city. And that was fine, except this is where all the biggest stores were, the biggest variety of stores. If you really wanted something, you needed to go downtown to get it and get the best selection. But as you can see, there wasn't a lot of room. And the main problem was traffic and primarily parking. There were not enough places to park. The downtown merchants were very aware of the problem that they didn't have enough parking for everybody who wanted to come here. And this is because car ownership really took off and increased a great deal after World War II, which ended in 1945. So here by the mid fifties, you see what the problem is. There is nowhere to park. It's very difficult to get around. You're keeping people away because it's not easy to access your store. So all of, obviously all of Wana really played up the idea that there was going to be parking. And not only was there going to be a lot of parking, it was going to be free. There weren't any meters. There weren't any paid parking lots. And this advertisement from, the new, from a newspaper in 1959 makes it very clear. And the text reads, parking so easy at Ala Moana, easy to reach, easy to get into, and so easy to park close to the 80 shops and restaurants says Mrs. Yoshie Yamashiro, after touring the 64 acres of free parking in Ala Moana, 
future home of air conditioned one stop shopping. Air conditioned does not mean the entire mall was air conditioned, it means the individual stores were air conditioned. Ala Moana today, I will point out, is the largest open air shopping center in the country. 350 plus stores. It's not enclosed, it's not a mall like Kahala Mall is. And obviously, th this is before the Ala Moana opened, but they're playing up 5,000 free parking spaces. Well, of course, everybody's going to be excited about that. How did Ala Moana get started? There's a very crucial story in this. As I have been talking about, a shopping center needs what's called an anchor tenant, the biggest store that's going to be an attraction of itself. Dillingham Corporation tried approaching a number of different mainland department store chains to see if they were interested in potentially being in on the ground floor at Ala Moana. None of them were interested. So kind of in desperation, Dillingham went to Sears. Sears was the largest department store chain in the United States at that time. And in fact, there were Sears stores in other countries as well. Sears already had this existing freestanding separate department store built on Baratania Street, which opened in 1941. And this is what it looked like in the early 1940s in its original size and configuration. And Sears wasn't that interested in letting go its entire complex on Baratania Street to move to Ala Moana. But there was one thing that was a problem there, and that, of course, as we've already talked about, was parking. After World War II in the late 1940s, Sears expanded and they built a second floor on this building. And that's what you see on the left side of this picture. But look at how many cars there are. Look at how crowded the parking lot is. Sears did eventually get control of property on the other side of Young Street. This is Young Street that we are on. We're looking Malka towards Baratani Street. And behind this view, another large parking lot was opened by Sears in the 50s. But it still wasn't enough. So Sears did agree to move to Ala Moana and be the anchor tenant. And the groundbreaking for Sears was held in 1958. And here is the store that was built at that place, at that location, at Ala Moana. And this is a two story, it's actually, yeah, it's two stories. They subsequently built a third floor on top of it in the 1970s. This is the original configuration of Sears. How did this happen? Sears and Dillingham worked out an interesting deal. Dillingham purchased the Sears department store on Baratania Street, and in turn, as a guarantee that they could then move into Ala Moana. Then Dillingham very carefully and very cleverly and very, very smartly sold the former Sears department store to the Honolulu Police Department, the city and county of Honolulu. And so many of us will remember that former Sears store being the main HPD station where you would go to get your driver's license, get your driver's license renewed, register your car. Well, that was the Sears store and you could tell that it had been a department store because it had escalators inside. How many police departments have escalators? That's because it was a former department store. So here's the Sears store. This is what made Ala Moana's development and beginning possible. And this worked out for Sears because not only did they get more parking for free, and that problem was gone, it also enabled them to move all of their departments there and build more and enlarge them. And one of the things that Sears had created at the former store was an automotive department, and they actually did car repair uh, and other stuff like that there, in addition to selling products, because Sears had its own line of um, tires and Sears had its own line of other automotive products. Well, at Ala Moana, they were able to expand that at the lower level, at the ground level, under the mall level. And that's what you see here. And again, if you are old enough, you will remember probably going to this Sears store at Ala Moana to get a new battery and maybe get new tires. I got four new tires there at one point, not that long ago. And within a year and a half, all three of them went flat. And when I went back to complain, the manager I spoke to said, yes, well, I'm sorry, he admitted that they had installed them wrong. That's why they'd gone flat. Well, 
Sears is now gone from the Hawaiian Islands. Sears is unfortunately on its way dwindling as a company, um, probably headed for its demise. But at the time, this Sears was the largest of all Sears stores in the entire chain, which again is amazing that that occurred here in Honolulu. What does a shopping center provide to a retailer that it isn't going to get in other places? Well, shopping centers provide convenience because they're all in one place. Shopping centers obviously provide free parking. Shopping centers also provide other amenities like meeting places. They also put on shows. They put on the stage programs. They stage exhibits. There are other things which people come there for in addition to buying stuff. And they also include amenities like artwork. They try to make their place pleasant and appealing to come to. Ala Moana did have a number of commissioned pieces of art in its early years. And you're looking at one of the biggest. It was the biggest one. This is a mural. This is colored cement. And it is an abstract view of the city of Honolulu. And it is installed on the Mauka facade of the McInerney store. McInerney was a local clothing store chain, and this was a large store. This was one of the smaller sort of anchor stores at Ala Moana when it opened. And this is an original art piece. This was commissioned and created, commissioned, uh, an artist was commissioned to create it. And it's difficult to tell that this is supposed to be Honolulu. Um, if you look on the far right, you may be able to discern an abstracted diamond head. And there are other things like Honolulu Harbor, Kewalo Basin, uh, Alawai Canal, Ko'olau Mountains, et cetera. As a little kid, I would look at this and really puzzle over it because Ala Moana opened when I was five years old. So I was seeing this at the age of five, trying to figure out what is that? Where is that? I kind of knew it was supposed to be Honolulu, but it was still mysterious to me. Well, this is gone. Ala Moana has undergone a tremendous amount of growth since 1959. It's incredibly valuable property. It is right in the middle of a big city. It has a number of buildings that have been built around it since it was constructed. And I mentioned it's the uh, largest open air shopping center in the country. I believe it is the eighth largest shopping center also in the entire United States. And unlike other malls and other places, it continues to be successful and it continues to be a major part of our retail and of our economy in general in the city of Honolulu. And finally, remember I mentioned and showed you downtown Honolulu crowded Fourth Street. Well, what happened to it? The downtown merchants knew that as soon as Ala Moana Center opened, they were being competed against very strongly. And one of the ways that they and the city of Honolulu, the city and county, tried to bolster their own position was through the creation of the Fort Street Mall. And that's what's in this photograph here, which was uh, built in 1968 and 1969. And this was something else that was also very commonly happening in American cities at that time. Downtowns were deteriorating, they were losing business, and they were trying to bring people back by sort of creating the experience of a shopping center in the middle of the city. This is a view from Hotel Street, which is what's in the foreground with this blue car is driving by, and we are looking down towards King Street. And Fort Street Mall initially was successful. It did bring people downtown. It did keep people there. But I'm sorry to say that today, Fort Street Mall is pretty much deserted. And there's very little going on there. Most of the retail spaces are empty. And of course, it's changed a lot since this picture was taken. Uh, there have been new buildings built right in this particular site that you're looking at here. Part of the problem for downtowns in general and for Honolulu as well has been the impact of COVID. Because once COVID took hold and when the pandemic began in early 2020, people started going, stopped going to offices and started working at home. And that has been also a major force in depopulating downtown Honolulu. So what's the point of all this? Well, here was a bit of history that, again, you probably didn't know. But also, I want to emphasize that things change all the time. Everything's dynamic. 
Human cultures are dynamic. Cities are dynamic. Everything's always changing and moving around. Something that's successful and busy, busy and crowded may lose all of that versus something which is unpopulated becoming very heavily populated. These are factors that are always going to be present with us. And there's something that you can keep in mind as you look around if you're here in Honolulu. What's happened in the past, what's happening now, and what's going to happen in the future. That brings us to the end of this episode of How Did We Get Here? This was called Let's Go Shopping, a look at some Hawaii, some of Hawaii's shopping centers. Um, I'm DeSoto Brown. Thank you for joining me. I hope you will join me again in the future on this program on Think Tech. And you can also look back on YouTube for older shows, not only of my program, How Did We Get Here?, but others as well on Think Tech. Again, thanks for joining me. And I hope I will see you again in the future. And until then, aloha, everyone. <laughs>